<laughs> this one is truly from a mum. Her handle is put down that laptop. Um, oh. Hi, it's Brian Cranston, and I'm uh, here in London and taking some questions from Mums Netters. I wrote a book called A Life in Parts, and so it was uh, a collection of short stories, uh, a memoir, if you will. And uh, so let's get right to the questions. Um, this is Barricade. Barricade asks, You've had a long and distinguished career acting, voicing, producing, directing in cinema, television, stage. How different and how much of a challenge was it writing uh, your latest autobiography? Um, these were stories that I've been telling all my life. So it actually wasn't that daunting, as, not as much as I thought it was. If I had the, the responsibility of looking at a blank screen and trying to fill 275 pages, and beginning, middle, and end, it would have been different. But this one uh, is a collection of short stories. So each story I've been telling a lot. And so I just sat down to write that one story. And when I was done with that, I would start another story. So it wasn't really uh, that bad. In fact, it was very cathartic. I, I really enjoyed the experience. Um, okay, this is from Megamum212. Hello, Megamum. Uh, we're imagining you writing this book in Walter White's camper van in the middle of the desert. Where did you do most of your writing? Uh, a lot of it was on airplane flights. Uh, there's something about, you're, you're sort of captive anyway. You're there, you're in a seat, you might as well do a little work. I also enjoyed it because uh, writing was very creative for me, but I was able to do it alone and my life has become so social that I, I crave some time alone and out of the public eye so I was able to create while being um, in solitude to, to a degree. Uh, this is from Monty79. What career would you have chosen if you didn't become an actor? That's easy. A wizard. This is from Gnumph. Gnumph. And Gnumph asks, what's your favorite line of dialogue that you had to say? Um, probably the line, um, you clearly don't understand who you're talking to, so I'll fill you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. I, I, I'm actually surprised I remember that line. Okay, this is from Fafon, F-F-O-N. Uh, how does it feel to have played one of the most badass characters ever? And do people, uh, I think, I think uh, Fafan means Hal from Malcolm in the Middle. Um, and do people ever ask you if you actually know how to make meth? Uh, yeah, I get that question quite a bit. And the drug enforcement agency, law enforcement agency in the States, their chemists uh, actually were our consultants and taught us how to make crystal methamphetamine. Okay. Next question. This is from Icky Kaz. <laughs> Icky Kaz writes, we have a saying in our house that everything in Malcolm in the Middle can be re related to everyday life. Have you ever accidentally replicated a scene from Malcolm in the Middle in your own life? Um, well, not, not accidentally, but um, do you remember this? Uh-oh. So, there was a game that we played, the circle game, and if you hold the circle below your waist and someone looks at it, you get to slug them. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a boys game. Uh, and we were getting letters from schools all over the world saying, how dare you teach this to our students? Everyone's doing it, stop it immediately. And we were like, well, there's a way, just don't look at it and you don't get slugged. And we have uh, a letter from uh, Susan Churchhouse, and Susan writes, uh, you were the regifter in the Seinfeld episode, The Label Maker, but what's the best gift you've ever been given? Uh, that's also very easy for me. It would be my daughter, Taylor. Um, just miraculous to see your child being born. Uh, it's it's embedded in my in my memory and hopefully it'll always stay. Thank you. T 
tea or the cat lady. Tea or the cat lady. Uh, and tea or the cat lady asks, have you ever been the subject of mistaken identity? If so, who have you been mistaken for? Um, the thing that pops into my mind that I wrote into the book was there was a time, a short period of time, when I was uh, mistaken to be a possible murder suspect. I'm not going, I'm not, that's not a joke. I was, for a short period of time, considered to be a murder suspect. So, I'll just leave it at that. This is from Velut She's Cute. Velut She's Cute. Uh, say my name, Brian. Oh, go on, please. Velut She's Cute. There you go. This one, this one is from Booty Girl. And Booty Girl writes, what is the one piece of advice you live by? I think um, I wrote a screenplay, I wrote a, a, a movie that I directed uh, several years ago now called Last Chance. And it's a romantic drama. Uh, I wrote it for my wife as a gift and she was the star and I played her husband. And before I write something, I always feel like I have to have a theme. And this theme was, I was mulling it around in my brain and I realized this really is um, not a cautionary tale, but it's a, it's, it is a life lesson. It is, uh, it is something I try to live by. And that is, it's more important to have a dream than to achieve the dream. Yes, it would be lovely if everybody was able to achieve their dream, but that's not the most important thing. What gets us up in the morning and what puts drive into our day and um, fulfills our, our hope is that we have a dream. It's better to have that dream and pursue it than it is to achieve it. And I think that's, uh, that's what I've tried to live by. That's it for now. Um, I, wanna, I wanna thank you, um, Mumsnet, for, for setting this up. Uh, I hope you enjoy the book. Um, in it, you'll, you'll read passages about my life that um, are honest, and uh, I hope you accept that. Uh, it's not a, an autobiography where everything is sweet and wonderful and everything works out right, because I don't relate to that. We all had challenges in our life, and I write about those challenges. And so at least you'll, be, you'll get an on, honest depiction of who I am. I appreciate it. Thank you for this time. Ta-ta.